Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug, if you're just tuning in for the first time. I am gonna be showing some recent records I've picked up, I've uh, been listening to. I may try and mix these videos up going forward, try and turn it into more of a, uh, a true listening diary, I guess you would say, would be the goal, uh, rather than strictly new finds, although many of these are. Uh, I've also been, uh, with the situation this year, the pandemic, uh, there were long stretches listening to things from the shelves, new things are starting to come in again, but I want to keep that, uh, that engagement with the, the, uh, the back part of the collection going, uh, keep listening to things that I haven't listened to in a while. I definitely don't want to let that slip away in favor of just bringing new things in. So I do kind of want to mix those two aspects of, uh, of the music collection up. I may try and uh, come up with a new name, a new brand for these uh, style of videos. We'll see how that goes, but we'll get right into it. Uh, weather, I don't know if you can hear, it's absolutely pouring rain. We had a nice stretch of weather out there. I got the lawn mowed just in time, just done yesterday. The rain hit today, uh, so that was good timing. Uh, absolutely pouring out there. I'm finding my listening habits uh, changing a little bit with the season, the autumn season coming on. Uh, I always like this kind of year, uh, but um, finding music that goes with it is kind of uh, interesting. A steady diet of Jamaican music, of course, but I'm also gravitating towards some folk sounds. Uh, this one I picked up uh, probably a month or two back on one of my trips into the city. Didn't get around showing it on another video. Fairport Convention, the influential UK folk act, uh, bringing back traditional British uh, folk songs, uh, merging them with a bit of rock instrumentation, rock um, presentation, you would say. Uh, this is from 1969, their third album that appeared in that year alone. Catches them kind of at a transitional period following their album before this. There had been an automobile accident that killed one of the members. Uh, they had a couple of new members come in, like uh, Dave Swarbrick had to come on board on a permanent basis, would be a long-serving member. Uh, lead singer Sandy Denny was on her way out left to form Fothering Gay, and uh, bassist Ashley Hutchings also left to join Steel Eye Span, both gone from the band by the time this album even appeared, but uh, ended up being a very uh, influential LP in their catalog. Still looking for their earlier ones, very hard to find in my area. This is a uh, 1970s reissue on a and Records. 1969 originally appeared. Uh, Come All Ye, the first track, is kind of a rousing sing-along, uh, summoning the musicians to strike up their strike up their instruments, summon up the, the inspiration, the elemental forces, get things going, get things happening. And uh, Matty Groves, I think, is one of the standards of their catalog. Eight-minute song of uh, murder and infidelity. Uh, one of these songs they, uh, that had been preserved for hundreds of years that they brought back and, uh, and represented for the rock generation. So, lovely album. I'm always on the lookout for early Fairport Convention. Still missing their ones before that. I think that's the earliest one I have by them. Uh, as well as the folk, I've been listening to quite a lot of jazz lately, especially spiritually oriented. Uh, I, guess, I guess I gravitate to that kind of music that uh, is something of a cultural expression that means something. That's definitely uh, things that have attracted me to reggae, to uh, hip hop in the past, throughout my, uh, my listening lifetime. I picked these two recent releases up off Bandcamp very recently, very recently. Everything's recent. Idris Akamur and the Pyramids. This is an album called An Angel Fell from uh, 2018. Picked two of them up by him. Lovely gatefold artwork, lovely painted cover. Even the texture is nice. It's the reason you pick these up on vinyl. Idris Akamur is a uh, real name is Bruce Baker. Started out in the 1970s, formed the Pyramids. Uh, he was associated with jazz musician, musician Cecil Taylor. Uh, and um, formed the original incarnation of the Pyramids, has since reformed the group in recent years and been putting out new albums on the Strut label, of which this is one. Uh, spiritual jazz, I gather there's quite a performance aspect to this as well. He's also an actor and uh, various other uh, disciplines he's involved in. Music is uh, one of them but uh, definitely a visual component with the Egyptian headdress and, uh, and so on. 
mix of vocals on here, some spoken word pieces. Uh, these albums take the form of kind of a, almost a concept or story uh, with personal elements to the, to the songs, to the music, as well as some political overtones, as well as... Uh, Telling a story. Spiritual jazz, I would say, not really too uh, inaccessible or discordant. Not uh, There is some of that kind of screeching sax solos, riffing, but uh, basically it's fairly melodic, fairly accessible, and uh, a fair amount of vocals on here as well. Lovely album from them. And I also picked up their brand new release, Shaman 2020 release. Again, fabulous painted artwork. And show that. Beautiful new spiritual jazz gatefold. And again, takes kind of an overarching uh, fantasy story theme with some uh, political and personal overtones. Theme for Cecil, obviously paying tribute to Cecil Taylor. The Last Slave Ship talks about the last known slave ship that arrived in America, bearing slaves from Africa. So very socio-political socio overtones, as well as more of an um, imaginary aspect, I guess you would say. Getting into a little bit more jazz, uh, these are some finds, or not finds, some spins from the collection. I had uh, picked these up quite a while ago, uh, brought them out again for another listen. Micaiah McRaven, In the Moment, CD. This is from a few years ago, I believe. I don't know if there's a year on that. Fairly recent release, 2000s, 2010s for sure. As well as uh, its acclaimed Universal Beings. I had listened to these. Uh, I can't really quite remember what made me decide to pick them up at, uh, at that time. Found them kind of inaccessible, so I brought them back. I put them aside for a while, Brought them out for a re-listen. Uh, this one, honestly, I still found kind of a tough listen. Uh, he's a jazz drummer. These are recorded basically live, but then he heavily re-edits them. Uh, almost, uh, um, almost the musical equivalent of Photoshop, uh, layering things, cutting and pasting, and recreating the tracks according to the way he wants to present them. Not necessarily something you can uh, detect on an audio level, but it does have that uh, reconstructed element to it. Uh, I found Universal Beings more accessible. This is basically live sets in different cities, New York, Chicago, London, and Los Angeles with various guest artists, uh, kind of a US side and uh, the British side as well uh, with uh, guests like Nubia Garcia and uh, Shabaka Hutchings. So some, uh, some high profile guest stars on here. Definitely kind of a loose improvis improvisatory feel to it, but uh, very nice album here. Enjoyed this one. They're both good. Just, I found uh, the other one a little bit, uh, a little bit harder to, uh, to reach, you could say. Some reggae pickups. These are a couple of online pickups from a while ago. I picked up, uh, there's one seller I kind of keep an eye on on Discogs. I grabbed uh, this one, Linval Thompson Linval, off them. This is actually on the Vista label out of the UK, I think uh, late 70s, early 1980s. This is actually just a reissue of his second LP, uh, Love is the Question, which appeared on the Burning Sounds label around 1978. This is just a reissue, straight reissue of it from a couple of years later. Uh, so very nice uh, singer. Uh, he would later move into production uh, in the early dance hall years of the early 80s, but this catches him kind of a, as a singer, performer in his own right, mainly roots reggae with the odd kind of love themed song uh, recorded at Channel One Studios with the Revolutionaries Band, Sly and Robbie. Uh, I was showing his boss man's dub in my uh, Channel One dub video again. That's Linval Thompson at Channel One, his preferred studio at the time. Linval, uh, released through Lord Coos to the Vista label, UK sound system guy. Uh, actually uses one of the rhythms uh, on here is uh, Black Uhuru's I love King Selassie, I think. Was kind of surprised to hear that on here. And uh, the other one I picked up from the same seller at the same time, kind of a chewed up cover here, Linval Thompson, Rocking Vibration. This too is a Vista Sounds reissue of 
one of his very earlier or slightly earlier albums. But when I got it, the album is called Rocking Vibra Rocker's Vibration on the Heartbeat label, which is actually this label here. It's a Mikey Dread, Dread at the Controls, various artists compilation, which originally appeared on the Heartbeat label. Uh, this is my reissue on his own Dread at the Controls label. So the seller has mixed up those two albums with very similar titles. It was in the wrong sleeve. So I got a full refund on that second one. And a slight track difference between this later uh, Dread at the Controls label pressing and that Vista Sounds one. There's a dub missing that is uh, not present on this one. So worth having, uh, for free, worth having a second copy, I guess. Uh, this one I was very stoked to pick up from another Dix Discog seller, Max Romeo, Warning Warning. This is from late 1970s, I think first came out mid, early to mid 1970s, Jam Sounds label, very nice pressing here. What this is, is actually an album called Revelation Time which appeared in Jamaica with that cover, uh, forms the basis of the Blood and Fire release, Open the Iron Gate. All the tracks on here, slightly expanded version of this release, uh, just different cover, different title, kind of a thing that would happen in reggae. Absolutely stellar release from him. He's perhaps better known for War in a Babylon. This is at least as good as that. Uh, shout out to the former owner, Kenneth Pendergrass. Boonton, New Jersey, with the Sounds of Unity, nice sound system name, I guess. Uh, absolutely killer Roots Reggae album, uh, Quarter Pound of Ice Shants, paying, paying tribute to the Herb, Three Blind Mice on here, actually produced by Lee Perry, tells the story of the police breaking up a dance. Uh, the title track of the Blood and Fire release, Open the Iron Gate, is on here. Uh, Taku. Actually, my favorite song on there. Them say Selassie is lost, but Jaja have the last laugh. Talking about the death of Haile Selassie and the impact it was having on the Rastas in Jamaica. Revelation time. Uh, Max Romeo was a singer who had started out in the late 1960s singing kind of risque songs like Wet Dream before citing up Rastafari and going in a heavily political direction that he's pursued ever since, still active, very socialist, uh, supporting Michael Manley's uh, socialist-leaning government in the early 1970s, which is a theme in many of his songs, supporting Michael Manley for Prime Minister of Jamaica and many of his policies. Very devout Rastafarian, put out that iconic, essential actually, War in a Babylon album, but uh, don't overlook that album from him either. Revelation Time, aka Warning Warning. It's been reissued by uh, VP Records with that original cover very recently. Uh, Record Store Day, I finally got a couple of uh, my two big arrivals that I wanted off of there. Studio One Rockers from Soul Jazz Records. This originally came out in 2000. This is the 2020 anniversary edition for Record Store Day on lovely green vinyl. Apparently this kicked off their uh, relationship with Cox and Dodd's Studio One label, which is still continuing to this day. A nice interview with the great man, the great producer, C.S. Dodd. Passed away in 2003, I believe, just a few years after this originally appeared. And this would set the template for many of their releases to come. Mix of uh, well-known classics with some more obscurities and uh, going for compilations rather than uh, reissuing the original Studio One LPs in their original format. Which, for better or worse, has been the Soul Jazz Records um, uh, decision to... Uh, to pursue with regards to the Studio One catalog. Also, Studio First from the Vaults, number, Volume Two. This was my big want for Record Store Day. This came out from Studio One itself in the US. Just double LP on black vinyl, tough to get out there, and comes with a bonus 12 inch single. Many previously unissued tracks here. Mega rarities. Most collectors will never, never even come close to breathing on these tunes. So nice for Studio One to be finally putting this out. And this is a sequel to a 2017 Record Store Day release 
the number one sound from the Vaults Volume 1. So nice to see Studio One finally putting the, the rarities out that collectors have been after for decades, finally appearing in official releases. So that is what I've got for you today, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, definitely got other things I'm gonna be sharing with you guys going forward, but uh, we'll keep that for another video. Try and keep this one concise. Thanks for tuning in once again. Peace.